Hello StarCraft fans, it's Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today we've got a game between Rogue and Neeb here on Backwater the Ladder Edition. This is a bit of a rematch between these two players from the StarCraft Hangzhou Carnival held in China uh, last month sometime. It was not originally cast in English replays and I'm casting them in English right now. In the bottom right hand corner of Backwater, we have the red Protoss player. It is Neeb. And in the top left hand corner, it's going to be the blue Zerg player, Jin Air Rogue. Or just Rogue. Playing for Jin Air. One of the best ZVPs I've ever cast in my entire life was between these two players. Just last month sometime. I can't remember exactly when it was, but it was on Neon Violet Square. So search for that one. Rogue versus Neeb. Neon Violet Square. It's in my epic playlist. If you ever have some time to kill and you want to watch some really amazing StarCraft, Pull up my epic playlist and just go through it. And just that is the list of the best games I've ever cast on my channel. In the history of my channel, which is over three years old now. So there's some good ones in there. Dating back to the early days of Legacy of the Void. I Hatch does go down here from Rogue at the third base location. He's okay with it. It's really protected for a third as far as third bases go in the current map pool. And the older map pool too. You can tell because this is on Backwater. This is on the previous patch. But there were literally no changes to balance made for Zerg or Protoss. So, don't there, I mean, there's no way this is going to be even really noticeable that it's on an old patch, except for the fact that it's on Backwater, as it turns out. Anyways, anyways, welcome to my channel if this is your first time here, which I can believe it. I've seen a lot of growth on the channel recently, some good sub numbers, some really amazing view counts too. A lot of it has to do with the professional free-for-alls that I've been casting, as well as that professional level uh, 4 versus 4 best of 7 that I tossed up a while ago too. That's been getting some crazy attention for some reason. I'm not sure if somebody linked on Reddit or what, but I feel like some of you have stuck around to watch some of that as well as the Brood War stuff. Maybe see what the StarCraft 2 has to offer. So welcome. So happy to have you here at 23,000 subs and growing daily. It's a good feeling. It is a good feeling to be growing daily this long into the YouTube. Regardless, let's focus on the game just a little bit here. Finally taking his natural base is Rogue, as he was planning on doing. Neeb couldn't really stop him from doing it unless he was sacrificing a lot of resources in the form of possibly a couple of cannons, or pylons rather, not cannons, but he decided not to. Smart. And it's an adept opening, double gas already done. Natural base completing here too for Neeb. So now his choice becomes clear. What does he want to make? It's going to be a Stargate? It's going to be a robotics facility, possibly. I feel like it's going to be a Stargate rather than that Twilight Council, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. So far, it's just going to be a couple of depths. Putting the pressure up, Queen getting some shots off, nope, holding back, and does not actually complete that transfer. Deciding instead, just going to set up a bit of a contain here. If the Lings want to try to come out, they can try it. Kill a couple of them, get some free damage done that way, and waiting for her friend, the second Adept, who's coming into the scene in the bottom right hand corner there. We're both going to shade right on past. Ling's going to follow these shades in. This is what you have to do, Zerg players. If you're tired of Adepts coming into your base and wrecking you, ugh. Uh, you want to follow them with Ling's. So this happens. If the transfer ever finishes, they will die. There's really no saving them. Sure, they'll kill a couple Ling's, maybe. But they won't get any drone kills if you do this correctly. And that's just a bunch of lost resources, man. Four Ling's for two Adepts is an exchange that Rogue will make every day of the week. Scouting Overlord comes in, sees absolutely nothing, because there is no high-tech ah, robotics facility at the front. The Lings end up scouting it anyway. And Rogue now the one to set up a bit of a contain. Once those Adepts are gone, map control belongs to the Zerg player. Which means he can do whatever he wants. He can send Lings out to the Zonlaga Watchtowers. He can send Overlords out to scout potential attack paths and more prism dropping areas. And then he can just kind of just macro up as much as he wants. Do the macro. Yes, let's just absolutely do the macro here today. Meanwhile, robotics facility just about done. It does take a while to build. 46 seconds in game. Doesn't sound like doesn't sound like that long, but geesh, it is a while. Actually, not. I mean, so 90 seconds is a really long time for for uh, Spire. Maybe we'll see one of those today. So just kind of some blind spores, or one blind spore rather, and a roach warren opening here from Mr. Rogue, adept stalker. And a sentry walked into a bar, and the bartender said, "What is this? A Starcraft joke?" And by golly, it was. Just don't know what the punchline is quite yet. So he's producing an immortal. He's going to go immortal sentry stalker here for a bit of an earlier push. He does have a third base, but that's just because on backwater, you're dumb if you don't take your third base. It's just so protected against Zerg especially. Sure, they could maybe drop ling it. They could probably rush to Mutalisk and try to do something with it too. But just, mm, it's really hard 
Really hard to punish a quick third on this particular base as a Zerg player, and Neve feels comfortable enough not even to worry about it, even against somebody as great as Rogue. So here comes the push. Hallucinated Phoenix is going to scat on on ahead and see what we're dealing with here. It's going to be five roaches on the way from Rogue to deal with these immortals and stalkers and zealots and sentries. Uh, Ravagers are going to be better in this situation just because there's a surround of force fields, which I think we're going to try to see from Neve, although there's not enough sentries to really do it. Right? Oh, Ling counterattack. Holding the line is an adept and a nice warp and of additional adept. The Lynx can't do much of anything at that point. Walking through the water, standing in the water. Which is probably not great for the circuits, but not bad either. The Lynx can't handle this. They can't handle this particular army, but they're delaying, right? They're keeping me from really pushing up before Rogue is ready for this. Allowing his Roach Count to get up higher. Possibly to make some Ravagers. That seems like that'd be really good. Instead of just going pure of Roach. Are you really coming home? Wow, Neeb's coming home. He's worried about those Lings turning into Banelings and breaking this front door. The force fields are really important at that point, And if you don't have the force fields with the army, you might as well not even push in. So <laughs> Rogue manages to stop the attack without killing anything. Just the threat, just the sheer threat of a Baneling bus right here was enough to make Neeb come all the way back home. So that, that's usually what we see, honestly, from the Protoss is they attack on in. Kind of keep the Zerg player at home while they macro up back home, but the, tur the, the tables were turned. The tides were turned on that one. And Rogue makes it happen for himself. Hey, look, a Spire. Remember when I said Spire is probably not going to happen? There's one. And there is your uh, 71 second build time. Did I say 90? I did. 71 seconds, which is a darn while in game time. Overseer picked off at Supply Blocks Rogue for about half a second. Archon drop. Here at the third base location, and trying to kill some stuff while not getting burned out of the sky by those queens. That anti-air from the queen is really great, and doesn't lose a single bit of hull damage there. Wow, just shields which will all come back. That's kind of important. If you want to keep that warp prism alive for a while, and trust me, you do. If you happen to be a Protoss player, then make sure you don't lose any of this green stuff. It's only blue stuff that you lose, as that is the stuff that goes first. Killing some creep tumors, at least ones that are in process here. Some free drone kills here. This is pretty nice stuff. Wah. Ugh. Roaches. Roaches showing up. Queen ready to rock here inside the main base. Kind of committing here as Neeb. Actually dropping. Going to get that queen. Got the queen picked up and rescued. Excellent job there by Neeb. Did take some whole damage there, but killing the queen was worth it. If just to slow down the macro a little bit for Rogue. He only has three queens and he's got four hatches, so he can't keep up consistent injects. On all of these right now, and I'm not sure how much he actually cares. He's at 72 workers. It is 80 for Neeb, though. And let's just say, if you're thinking that Neeb can't win this because Rogue is a much better player, I'll just tell you that's not the case. This is part of a series that they played, and I know for a fact that Rogue did not sweep the series. So stick with Neeb. No, he hasn't performed exceptionally well recently, but I believe he has an in him to beat anybody on Earth on any given match, depending on how things go. He has that capability. He has that ceiling, which is really all you want in StarCraft 2. If you can get to the point where you can beat anybody. Oh, War Prism, unload! Oh, Neeb. I guess he was worried about the Mutas flying into his base. There's a cannon here already, though. And the Mutas are left to try to kill some of these pylons, which is not what they want to destroy. They want to kill workers, but if they're not allowed, then so be it. I suppose. Mutaflot getting kind of big. For Rogue, actually, this is a little bit surprising. He's just taking out all of these pylons. Trying to depower stuff, but so far there's enough pylons that nothing's been depowered yet. There's a nice warping of stalkers here flying back into this fourth base location where there are cannons to heal. Cannons to heal, cannons to shoot, and shield batteries to heal. Gotta get out of there, Mutas. Go! And they do. Oh, just kidding. Juke back in. Juke back in. We got the cannon. We can kill some probes in here, and by golly. Making good work of it, too. Only three probes have gone down, though. Neve done a great job defending so far. I like to see. It is not easy to defend against Mutas, but the best players can do it and make it look fairly easily while taking minimal losses. This Muta count makes 16 Mutas on his EVP. It's Rogue. It's Rogue who does that. Hey, guys. Ready to go? Ready to go. One of my favorite units in StarCraft, but, man, they are hard to control. Without dying, I guess. Sure, sure, just a better stutter step action here, picking off additional probes, flying here into the natural base. Bit of an artosis pylon, but nope. Whoa, but whiff on that storm. Cannon gets focused down. That's the thing about these mutas. <laughs> Is that they get focused down cannons. If there's this number of them, you just kind of 
destroy the cannon, destroy Warpring and Stalkers, keep these guys alive, keep the Protoss player inside while you're expanding again up north here, and then just pull back, wait for that tissue regeneration ability to kick in, and then fly back in again. Free probe here. Just slow, slow pickoffs. So the base probably going to go down. 17 probes have been killed so far. It is 82 to 70. That Yeah, the tables have absolutely turned. Major engagement in the front here. Roaches and Banelings. The tech of choice on the ground for Rogue. Immortal's doing real good against the Roaches. The Storm's helping there immensely, too. The Banelings are basically gone, and walking through his own Storm is Neeb. But now he's able to push the Zerg player back. The Mutas end up flying back around. A couple of them are pretty darn injured. And some Ravager. There we go. Some Ravager morphing from Rogue. I expected to see those earlier, but I guess he was waiting. S -s -s or saving his gas for these Mutas. And that is why. This is exactly why most Protoss players like to open Stargate. Is because it kind of shuts down the Mutas. With the Phoenix ability. The ability to create Phoenixes very quickly does shut this thing down. Once you got five Phoenix or so... The Mutas just really have a hard time making anything happen. Phoenix are so fast. They do bonus damage versus Muta. Yeah, don't take splash damage from those Archons, Mutalists, because that's a bad thing. Flying back into this area, a lot of these guys are really injured right now. Yellows and oranges kind of setting up a contain at the front. It is Rogue 2, 184 to 160. Total supply. Rogue is up. I just... Banelings crashing on in, storming through, trying to get these High Templar, but nice dodging. And High Templar killing their own Banelings, too. With their attack that is fairly new here in the Legacy of the Void. Meanwhile, the Mutas are trying to take down that 5th base location attempt of Needs. I think they're going to get it. Banelings going to take down an Immortal. No. <laughs> Immortal says, uh-uh. Not going to take me down. Still, 194 to 149 total supply. Neeb is in a lot of trouble. Great storms, though. Keeping Rogue back. This army of Ling, Baneling, Ravager doesn't have a lot of HP. As it turns out. So in a direct engagement with Storms, you can do a lot of good stuff. Picking off one of those Mutas. Are these Mutas trapped now? They're kind of trapped. Stalkers have plus two attack. Mutas have plus one attack. Oh, they're going to force another cancel on this base, though. No, they're not. The Stalker's chasing them out of there. Get out. Get out, the Stalkers end up saying. Zealot. Any Zealots? Nope. Lings, Banelings. There's another couple great storms here. Another wonderful storm absorbing the Baneling shots on Immortals. Exactly what you want them to do. Another great storm on the Lings! Forcing them back, but the Muta's trying to finish off this base down south. Nope, a little bit carelessly getting picked off there. It is 154 to 147 total supplies. Very, very close, but the Banelings are rolling into this mineral line at the fourth base location. Probe's getting pulled out of there very, very nicely. Archon's just stabbing them down. Six kills. 13 kills, roaring them down. And suddenly it's 135 to 122 total supply. Neba's up. He's got upgrades. He's got plus two attack. Plus three is just about done here, too. He's got Storm. Ultralisks are on the way from Rogue. I do like that. Not that the Immortal count is down to a manageable two. Nine of them have been killed so far. It has not been incredibly cost-efficient attacks uh, on those Immortals, but if you can take them down, it makes your uh, Ultra Tech switch a lot better. Zerglings do have plus two attack, which is really actually kind of nice. But they're not going to get this Nexus because most of the army of Neve ends up coming back to deal with it. Which is exactly, again, what Rogue wants. He hasn't really been bothered by the Zerg player at all. Or the Protoss player throughout this game, not even once. Zerglings coming on in for a bit of a counterattack. Oh, free Immortal. Free Immortal. No, instead... Oh, they got through, Bob! No! Bob, you do have one job! Alright, Zerglings come in. I guess the Forge is a good target, they say? I don't know. Sure, why not? Zerglings attacking against these Zealots. The Zealots have that plus three attack, though. And there aren't that many of them. Nice storm. Kind of hold the line there for just a little bit. Now on top of these probes, Neeb is just kind of falling apart right now. Got Zergling trying to run into that fifth base. Uh-uh. The army can defend that one. And eventually the probes do finish off that Zergling. Something I learned recently is that somebody on my channel asked, Hey, if Ultras are fully upgraded and they've got, uh, you know, seven armor, does that just mean that workers do no damage to them because they only do five damage and can't be upgraded? The answer is no! There's a minimum attack damage that any unit will do when attacking any other damage, no matter what the upgrades are, and it's 0.5. As those Archons get picked off their nice pickup by Rogue. So it's 0.5. So no matter what you're attacking, and no matter what you are, and no, no matter what upgrades are available, and part of this whole thing, uh, you're going to do 0.5 of one damage on every attack, no matter what. As these Lings get cleaned out. Rogue is just sending Ling counterattacks willy-nilly. At Neeb, while he gets his Ultralisk army up. He's got five of them. He's making three more. He's getting Kindness Plating and plus three ground melee attack. 
for his Zerglings and his Banelings and his Ultra Risks, which he definitely has another base here. It's just resources lost, 21,000 for Rogue and 20,000 for Neeb. So, so far, the cost efficiency has been good for Neeb. Not bad, at least. He is fully maxed out. He's killing his own unit so as to make more Immortals, which you need, which you absolutely need if this is going to be Ultra. Here we go from the top. Here come the Ultras. Lings from the bottom here, too. Ultras on the left side. Nice storms in all around the areas. You gotta take down the Ultra list. You gotta focus them down with the Immortals. A lot of them are pretty injured right now. You can't try to kill the Ravagers with the Immortals. There we go. A little bit of kiting here on the Immortals, and every one of the Ultras is down but one. And actually, blinking forward to take that guy down are the Stalkers. Ze Zealots with plus three attack, at least absorbing a lot of Bailing. A lot of Ling attacks here. Zealots do take down a hatchery. Kind of first blood by Neeb, taking down a base. I mean, that doesn't sound all that impressive, but it's definitely the truth. Is there adrenal glands done? Indeed there is. Adrenal glands done on these Lings, making them tiny little crackling murder machines. I like them a lot, especially with that plus three attack, doing eight damage per hit. 0.35 weapon speed, attack speed. It's just zippy, bam, 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 three times. And then game second here is wonderful. Zergling's coming on down again. Rogue, Rogue has made good use of these. And this base cancel. Oh, I was going to say it just finished and then it died. Nope. It just straight up died. Archon. Wow, trying to open some Archons on here. Look at these Crackling take down this Nexus. Holy smokes. No big deal. Cracklings, man. If you can use them, they will do good things for you. It takes a while to get them to this point. But eventually, they can take down entire Nexuses for you just by themselves. In the late game. If that's something you want to do as a Protoss player, research, or Zerg players, research, Cracklings. Now, 188 to 149 total supply. Base is coming back up here for Rogue. This base is still happily running. And Neve knows about it. Neve is aware of it. But he's at one, 200 supply to 154 for Rogue. That's pretty good stuff. The upgrades here, that plus three attack benefiting everything on the ground. Everything you see, except for the observers, benefits from that plus three attack. Including High Templar. So they do seven damage per shot. It's not supposed to be a lot, but I don't know. I feel like with plus three, it's pretty good. And it can turn the tide of a battle. Ah, Zergling's rolling in again at this southern base. This game, you guys, another Nex is going to go down. Neeb not coming home for that one. No Siri Bob. Bailing's trying to roll on in. The Absorbing the shots are the Archons. Attacks from all sides. Not going very well for Rogue, though. Neeb splitting his units. Has the Archons in front to absorb the shots. The Immortals in the back. And it got to really focus down on those Immortals. Everything else is totally dealable for Neep here. He just needs to focus down the Ultralisks with the Immortals. And that new hatch almost gets focused down there, though, but not exactly working out. The thing about the Ultras is, is a blinding cloud goes down for those Vipers. Transfuses on the Ultras, too. This game is madness. This game is absolute madness here. 170 to 102 total supply. Neep has this lead. These Immortals have just been putting in work. Nine kills. Five kills. These High Templar are trying to do the best, but that's it. A good game from Rogue. Rogue is defeated, and Neeb is your winner in 18 minutes here on Backwater, the latter edition. What an absolutely impressive display from our Protoss player today on this Monday. Wow. Absolutely insane. Look at this. 42,000 resources lost for Rogue compared to 31 for Neeb, and Neeb was defending. He was defending the first 75% of this game, never really moved out and bothered Rogue at all, except for one adept attack that absolutely got shut down. Other than that, he was on the defense. Rogue sending Lings after him, sending Bane Lings after him, sending Roach attacks after him, sending Mutas in to do a lot of work too. Look at this, 56 probes died. And Neeb didn't care. He just shrugged it off, continued to work on his plan. Archons, Immortals, Storm, Stalkers, and Zealots with charge. And that was it. That's all he needed. His army was not huge at the end of the game. It was eight Zealots, four Immortals, two Archons, 21 Stalkers. Okay, 21 Stalkers is kind of a lot. Uh, but he ended up losing 13 Immortals there. 474 Lings went down. 10 Ultras died. I don't feel like the Ultras did a lot, is the thing. Yes, Rogue did a great job whittling down that Immortal count and then tech switching into the ult or into the um into the Ultralisks. But the Immortal count came back, man. There are four of them. 13 downs, which means he had 6 or 7 when the Ultras first engaged, and that's enough. These guys doing 65 damage versus armored. 
Take down an ultra real, real fast. Real fast, I tell ya. But yeah, these stalkers didn't... I mean, they were great against the mutas. Great against picking off some of the ultras there. Their bonus damage versus armored kicking in there quite nicely. But in the end, in the end, Protoss is your winner. And Rogue ends up going home with a loss here today. Amazing. Oh, amazing display from Neeb. If you're a fan of Neeb, and you should be, this has got to be one of your favorite games. Wow. All right, so that's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another StarCraft II Legacy of the Void upload. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.